As far as election integrity issues go, um, the best news is that we did pass prohibition to ranked choice voting in this state. The uh, RNC, the Republican National Committee, also passed a resolution in January wanting the same thing. If we have ranked choice voting, we will lose our state. It'll flip Democrat within just a couple of years. So that was a huge win. The other uh, resolution that we brought forward at our summer meeting was one I brought forward to remove college IDs to be used for identification at the polls. That has been brought forward, and Tina Lambert, one of our freshman legislators, and I think Scott Herndon carried that, carried that bill. Two freshman legislators on both of those bills carried it and got them through and signed. So that was excellent, because we do have some good legislators in this, in this body. Uh, the other issue is one that we did defeat was, for some reason, the Secretary of State's office decided to change our electioneering laws. And I know most of you know that to electioneer from a polling place, you have to be 100 feet away. So here everybody's been carrying around their 100 feet measuring tapes, and they wanted to change it 40 feet from a property line. Nothing could be more arbitrary and confusing. My husband back there is a licensed surveyor, and I will tell you a fence line, a row of trees, and a piece of metal on the ground doesn't necessarily constitute a property line. So we would see a lot of lawsuits with that uh, had that moved forward. 100 feet is what it's been for 40 years. Why are we trying to confuse people? So that one was killed by a 6-6 vote. Uh, so I had to start going and testifying to get some of these bills, well, mainly because my husband's surveying a uh, license. But uh, this is the kind of thing we don't need to add confusion to elections that should be cut and dry and very simple. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the fact we just lost our presidential primary. In an attempt to save money, funny, I didn't know the state ever tried to save money. But anyway, in this state, the $2.5 million purportedly, um, uh, per, uh, let's put it this way, purportedly, uh, to pay for a presidential primary um, was, uh, this is every, once every four years, of course, uh, we were moved from a March primary to the May primary, but in HB 138, where they were moving this election to determine which delegates would go to the National Convention to support our, our candidate, was to be moved to May, and oh, oh, guess what? They forgot to put in the March primary for president will be moved to May. So as of right now, you all do not get to vote for any presidential candidate until November comes around. But hearken, we are on top of it, your Idaho GOP. We will make a lemonade out of these lemons, and we will make sure you all get to vote, as long as you're registered Republicans, for your choice for the primary uh, presidential candidate. Um, anyway, so those are the kind of things going on. I cannot believe that anybody was put in by Republicans. Our governor and our secretary of state would dare take away our presidential primary when the 2024 primary will be the, probably be the biggest primary ever in my lifetime. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have Trump, we're gonna have DeSantis, we're gonna have, let's see, Mike Pompeo has already been hanging around, I don't know what he's gonna do, Nikki Haley. There'll probably be 20 candidates running. And if we could get a bunch of them here to give them a bag of our sugar, or we can give them some potatoes, or we can show them our timber products, that marketing alone is worth $2.5 million. So anyway, but this is the decision of the State Central Committee. We will be making a decision on how we will approach that in Chalice on June 23-24. And the State Central Committee will come up with some way to get this done. So uh, that's the news on the election issues here within uh, Idaho and that concerns the Idaho GOP. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Clements, for being here. I am getting ready to show uh, an event. Some of you, how many any of this room have seen 2,000 mules? Oh, a lot of you. Okay, good, good. Then you guys know other people need to see 2,000 mules. So um, when I was running for Secretary of State the last 10 days of my campaign, I took 2,000 mules and it was just hot off the press and I, I took it into every venue I was at across this state. Southeast Idaho, over in Caldwell, the, the church there on Eustick. Um, but I didn't have very many viewings here in Boise because it was hard to get it nailed down on such short notice. But we will be having, uh, Idaho GOP will be hosting an event to show 2,000 mules if we have time to movie rig so that you can understand the complexities of absentee ballots. One thing I forgot to mention about absentee ballots is that there was, and most of you remember, if you had an absentee ballot when you first started voting, you had to go sign an affidavit, but not only that, have it notarized, that you were who you were and your reason, you know, okay, let's hear your reason, going off to college, gonna go take care of grandma on the floor, whatever, that died. We need to get that back. 
the biggest problem, a lot of the problems are the absentee ballots and we need to vote in person and we need to make sure we tighten that entire process up. So anyway, again, thank you, Dr. Clements. Thank you for all of you coming out and uh, we'll see you with the mules showing. It'll be advertised on social media and hopefully you get your friends there. Even if you've seen it, you need to come see it again, okay? Get that fire in the belly hotter. Thank you.